Hi, it's Dr. Ogden. Uh, now we're going to look at the second half of cellular division and mitosis and meiosis, where we'll be looking at sexual reproduction and the process of meiosis and how that produces diversity in gametes. Sexual selection, sexual reproduction is different. In sexual reproduction, we produce gametes, and so this alter, there's this alternation between haploid and diploid life um, uh, cells. So let's talk about that for just a moment. If you look at the adults here, and again we're looking at humans, we are diploid adults, meaning the cells in our body are diploid. They are composed of pairs of homologous chromosomes. We have 23 pairs. So our n number is 23. 2 times 23 equals 46. When our sexual cells right, inside of our testes and ovaries go through meiosis, they produce eggs and sperm. And eggs and sperm are haploid because they have only an N, not a 2N condition. And our N number is 23. So there's only 23 chromosomes in an egg cell and 23 chromosomes in a sperm cell. When the egg and sperm come together through the process of fertilization, once again you get back to a 2N or diploid condition. And then that goes through, this cell just goes through mitosis, 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 until it becomes the adult. And then at sexual maturity, um, once again, meiosis can begin to happen to produce haploid gametes. So the process then of meiosis, we, to look at this, let's look at the simple case of these two homologous chromosomes here. So you can assume that, you know, the red cell maybe came from a mother and the the, the blue cell here was from the father, and just like in mitosis, in meiosis, these, uh, the cell during the interphase stage goes through a chromosomal duplication. So it goes through the synthesis, where you now end up with sister chromatids, so twice the amount of genetic material, but still I only have two chromosomes here. So I started with two, and I still only have two. Then I go through the first stage of meiosis. So meiosis has two stages. And in the first stage of meiosis, what is separating are the homologous chromosomes. That never happened in mitosis, okay? But in meiosis, in meiosis 1, homologous chromosomes separate. And so now I have a haploid cell. I started off with two chromosomes, and now I only have one chromosome. Then in meiosis 2, sister chromatids separate. Now that is the same as what was happening in mitosis except in mitosis, it was a diploid cell um, having sister chromatids separate, and in meiosis we have haploid cells that are having sister chromatids separate. So we end up with haploid cells over here as the daughter cells, and these are the gametes, the eggs and the sperm. So in meiosis, again, what we're trying to cre create are haploid gametes, and it takes two consecutive divisions, meiosis 1, meiosis 2, and the point of meiosis is to create diversity, where the point of mitosis was to create identical daughter cells. Here we're trying to create non-identical haploid daughter um, ga or ga gametic cells. So in um, you, the stages that are named the same in each meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, so you have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis, and, and there are some differences though. In prophase 1, the, the homologous chromosomes come close together and they actually touch each other and form these sites of chiasma and you get these crossing over events that occur or, or genetic recombination. And so now you end up with red chromosomes with blue tips and blue chromosomes with red tips. Then, during metaphase, the other difference here is that homologous chromosomes line up right next to each other, not all along the, the midline of the plane, but homologous chromosomes each ready to go to each side of the cell. And in this, and when anaphase occurs, it pulls homologous chromosomes apart, not sister chromatids. Then you go through telophase and cytokinesis, and you never really reform uh, form again the entire nuclear membrane. It kind of stays um, dissipated and you go immediately into meiosis 2. And in meiosis 2 you once again have a prophase and then you have the metaphase and in this case now the these as the cell is in a haploid condition but all of the chromosomes line up along the midline so this should look reminiscent of what was happening in mitosis and in anaphase the sister chromatids are separated 
and you eventually end up again you go through telophase and cytokinesis and then you end up with the daughter haploid cells and we call these gametes eggs or sperm so um, so again in meiosis what we're trying to do is create diversity and so another pr important principle of creating this diversity is what's called independent assortment of chromosomes if we look here at a simple case again of just a two paired chromosome um, cell so we have two pairs of chromosomes the red blue big and the um, blue red small they could line up during meiosis one where you have blue red blue red or it could line up blue red red blue now if it does that you could see that the downstream effects are you end up with a combination a gamete a combination B gamete so here we have a little blue big blue a little red big red but we if we go through this um, arrangement then and after we go through the meiosis 2 we end up with a combination C a little red big blue and a little blue big red so ultimately there are four different types of gametes that are produced simply just by how the chromosomes line up during metaphase of meiosis 1 so this is the simple case where you have two pairs of chromosomes so it's a 2n system where n equals 2 so it's 2 to the 2 which equal, which is 4 so there were four possible combinations four possible different gametic cells a b c and d if we think about the human system where we have 23 pairs it's going to be 2 to the 23 which is 8,388,606. So that's the number of different possible gametes simply due to independent assortment of chromosomes during meiosis, right? It's a huge number, right? And no, no two parents are having 8 million different kids, and this is why you never see identical siblings from two different fertilization events. It just does not happen. We don't, have, we don't have that many offspring in order for this to, to occur. The other thing that also um, uh, adds the variation to these number of possible gametes is the fact that we have crossing over, which I mentioned. So during prophase, leading into metaphase, remember that you form a tetrad and then you have these chiasma or sites of crossing over where genetic recombination can occur. And so you end up now with blue chromosomes with red tips and red chromosomes with blue tips. So now you even have to add more, ver more possible um, gametic combinations because now you have recombinant chromosomes as well so that 8 million number even gets higher so I want to spend just a little bit of time talking about what happens when problems occur in meiosis so if you look at these two karyotypes what do you see well obviously in this 21st pair over here there are just the two that there should be but over here we actually have three this is called trisomy 21 because it's occurring in the 21st pair of chromosomes you probably are more familiar with it uh, uh, from the word uh, using the words down syndrome this was described out from the doctor John Langdon down and one out of every 700 children at least here in the US are born with trisomy 21 and it turns out that the older that a mother is the higher the chance she has that a child has down syndrome so why is this what's happening you know what what's the point here well it turns out that during meiosis 1 or meiosis 2 sometimes the spindles do not correctly grab the chromosomes and pull them apart and so you end up with what's called a non disjunction event and this can occur again in meiosis 1 or it can occur in meiosis 2 and you can see the downstream effect of this you end up with gametes that are haploid plus one or haploid minus one right and this can be a big problem typically this is um, the way that it occurs an egg comes in for example with an haploid plus one uh, number of chromosomes and the male comes in with the normal m number of chromosomes and, and fertilization takes place and so now you end up with a 2n plus 1 so a, a diploid plus 1 extra chromosome in, in most of the times this is a 21st pair chromosome non disjunction event that then results in down syndrome there are other types of non disjunctions that do perpetuate for example 
in the sex chromosomes, you can have two X's and one Y, and this is Kleinfelder, or one X and multiple Y's, or multiple X's, or an X only and no other chromosomes. So that would be the 2N minus 1 condition. And here's just some of the characteristics of someone who is an XXY. They have what's called Kleinfelder syndrome, underdeveloped testes, breast development, poor beard growth, or someone who has Turner syndrome with underdeveloped ovaries, poor breast development, you know, and these in other interesting characteristics around the neck with this web of skin.